Hey everyone, it's Jeremy over here, and I'm gonna show you how to make these delicious lava cakes with creme anglaise. And we are so lucky today, we are using Cho Chocolate. Cho is based up in Berkeley. They are one of my favorite chocolate makers of all time. So we're using, they're around 60% chocolate today, dark chocolate. It is so delish. We got chocolate, we got chocolate. The first thing I wanna do is get my pans ready to go. So I've got my little ramekins. In your kit, you've got aluminum ones. You could use these ones as well. Both work beautifully. But you wanna make sure it's around a four to six ounce ramekin. I'm gonna go ahead and just spray my ramekin with a little bit of pan spray. You could use butter as well. So I've got those well coated and I'm going in with two tablespoons of sugar just into one of those ramekins. And I'm gonna go ahead and roll my sugar in that ramekin to coat the whole ramekin with a little bit of sugar. Once I rolled, I'll give it a little tap and I'm letting all that sugar fall into the next one so we can use that sugar for all four ramekins. And once you've coated all four ramekins, that extra sugar, you can just disregard. Once our ramekins are lined, we're gonna go ahead and get our cake base made. I like to line the ramekins first so that that's ready to go. When my cake's ready, it can go right into the mold. So I've got one stick of butter. I'm just gonna chop it into a few smaller pieces. I'm not being very particular about this, but I wanna get them into the bowl. They'll melt down a little bit better if they're smaller. In my bowl with that butter, I'm going in with all six ounces of my chocolate. As you're doing that, have a little tasty taste of your chocolate. Make sure it is tasting delightful. And we're gonna go ahead and get this over a double boiler. And so a double boiler is just a pot of water that comes up to a simmer and we're gonna set our bowl on top of it. So you wanna make sure you're doing this in a heat safe bowl. Just mix this until it melts down. You can also do this in the microwave if you wanted to at 30 second increments every 30 seconds just give that chocolate a stir until you get that nice melty point my chocolate has melted down i know it's ready to go we've got a beautifully shiny chocolate going on i melt the chocolate first so i can give it a minute to cool the rest of our cake is egg based if we put this in while it's still hot it can cook the eggs so we're gonna let that cool for a minute, just a little bit. It might still be warm, but it won't be hot and right off the heat. While it is cooling, I'm going in my bowl and I'm gonna go ahead and add two egg yolks, two whole eggs, and three tablespoons of sugar. And my little trick with our sugar over here, I like to do three separate piles in my bowl because I'm a distracted baker and I find a lot of times I'll be talking, I'll forget how much I measured, but when I do three separate piles, I can count my one, two, three piles. And we're just gonna go in and give this egg and sugar mixture a nice whisk up. And I'm gonna whisk for about two minutes, nice and vigorously. What we're looking to do as we're whisking, we wanna aerate these eggs and sugar. You wanna incorporate a little air. There's no leavening in this cake. So all the air is getting incorporated right now. We whipped about two minutes. What I'm seeing, it kind of falls off in streams. It has lightened in color because there's so much air incorporated. And I see a ton of air bubbles floating on top. That's what's gonna give our cake just a little lightness. This cake is dense and rich and like uh, very gooey and that's the lava cake style. But we do want that little aeration in it so that the cooked cake parts are light, the center lava part is a little bit more luscious. And so whipping that air into it really gets that started. This is where we get to kind of make a chocolate waterfall, live the Willy Wonka fantasy. And so I want you to raise your bowl, get all of that beautiful chocolate incorporated. And you don't want to miss one bit of that chocolatey goodness. And I'll just scrape the sides of the bowl and kind of turn everything onto itself, bringing this together just until there's no streakiness.
I'm seeing no streaks in here. And this is ready for our last ingredient. And our last ingredient is a tablespoon and a half of all-purpose flour. The flour is just adding that last little bit of structure, so it's a very forgiving cake. And so I'm just gonna sprinkle that all over the top, and then I'll fold it in. And it just lightly thickens the batter. And this is what we're looking for. Your batter will be a different texture depending on temperature. So if your chocolate was warmer when it goes in, your batter will be a little thinner. If your chocolate was a lot colder, say it rested for like 20 minutes and had no heat to it, it's gonna be a lot thicker. And that's because that chocolate and butter are starting to solidify. And it works either way. I like it when my batter's runnier because then I can get it in the molds a little bit easier. And so we're just gonna portion this into our molds. We've got four molds and we wanna fill it to just under the little line on your cup. So on my cup right here, I have that line right there. The aluminum one's the line's a little bit higher. As it bakes, it'll rise up past that line. Once I've got them evenly filled, I like to go in just and tap them and make sure everything is nice, level, and ready to bake. They're gonna go in the oven for seven to 10 minutes. And I'll check at the seven minute mark. Usually they're done perfectly at the seven minute mark and I'll show you exactly what we're looking for. To go with our beautiful lava cakes, we want the most delicious creme anglaise, which is a French vanilla sauce. It's a custard based sauce. It's cooked on the stove. And so to start that out, I wanna get two cups of half and half going on my stove. So I'm going in one cup of whole milk, one cup of heavy cream, equal to two cups of half and half. Two cups on a medium heat, bringing that to a simmer. While that is coming to a simmer, we're gonna go ahead and get our six egg yolks and our remaining half cup of sugar just whisked up. Unlike the cake, we don't need to whisk air into this. For this one, we just wanna whisk till it's nice and combined. So it's still looking a little grainy in there and that is okay. Once our half and half comes up to that simmer, we'll add it in to our egg mixture to temper it. And tempering is just slowly adding in that cream so that we don't curdle our sauce and get cooked eggs. And then we'll bring it back to the heat and cook it till you get a beautifully velvety sauce. So our cream has come to a simmer. I'm gonna go ahead and slowly stream it into the eggs while I'm whisking. And I'll just do this bit by bit. You start with a little. Once that's incorporated, go in with your next little bit. I'm probably going about a half cup at a time. We're just avoiding those eggs cooking. And so I went ahead, I've added all my half and half in with those eggs. I'm gonna bring my pot back onto the stove and just on a medium heat, I'm gonna cook this mixture until it thickens. While I'm cooking this mixture, I wanna scrape constantly with a rubber spatula. You could do it with a wooden spoon as well, but the rubber spatula is gonna ensure that you don't get any little cooked eggy bits on here. And you wanna cook this till it just slightly thickens. Do not boil your creme anglaise. It will cause those egg yolks to cook. Egg yolks cook at around 185 degrees. So you wanna cook it till just that point where the egg yolks have set. If you go past there, the egg yolks will kind of pull out of the sauce and you'll have a grainy sauce. Mine over here is just finishing up. The things I'm feeling as I scrape the bottom of that pan, you can kind of feel the bubbles of steam happening underneath. That is a sign it's close. The second sign is that steam will rise. And the third sign is that it coats your spatula. It's gotten nice and thick. If you're like, oh no, I overcooked it, I see eggy bits, you can run it through a fine sieve and get rid of those eggy bits. It won't be quite the same. It won't be as thick because that egg thickening power has been drained out, but it'll still be delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this with a splash of vanilla extract just to flavor it, give it that nice, beautiful flavor. And this sauce is ready to go. If you ever wanted to flavor this with other things, you could flavor it with uh, fruit zest, other extracts, you could flavor it with spices. This is actually the base for eggnog. So if you love eggnog, add a little nutmeg and cinnamon to your uh, half and half while it's cooking down. And then you get a beautiful eggnog base. Right now you could add a shot of whiskey, have your little eggnog moment. But while we were cooking that, our cakes came out of the oven. So we have our beautiful lava cakes over here. They are looking so good. And I can tell they are ready to go because the top 
is nice and set around the edges. It's a little soft in the center, so I know it's got that lava -y goodness. And when I press on one side, I kind of see it bulging on the other side. So those are my signs this cake is ready to go. We're gonna go ahead, unmold them, serve them with the sauce. So to remove the cake from our little mold, give it a second to cool down. Don't burn yourself like I always like to do. You can use a little towel around it. And we're just gonna go ahead, I like to put the plate on top and just give the mold a little flip and it should pop right out. Top this with a nice spoonful of our creme anglaise. And now it is time for the little reveal, my favorite part. We're gonna cut right in, open it up, and you see that beautiful, ooey gooey lava center, your beautiful cake, that creme anglaise. Oh, and I'm going in for a bite. It is such a good cake. Enjoy every bite of this, and please, as you unmold it, have it ready to go, take a photo, tag at Jeremy Darm, at Truffle Shuffle SF. I wanna see your beautiful lava cakes out there, and beautiful work, Chef. Until next time.